bringing out the old 1982 shoes that I used to wear. They're still in good shape. Check out these. Still have blood stains on them from like 30 years ago. These are all my old squat and deadlift shoes I had since 1982. I, uh, I doubled oh. 900 a deadlift in these. Holy cow, let me see those. What? I don't care what that young whippersnapper says. I'm still using the old shoes that I know work because I still deadlift more than him. Fuck you, Mark. I think that's the hardest part of my day is actually trying to tie my shoes. This is Mark Bowman, Super Training TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. And today we are going to learn how to squat from this guy right here. No, 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 not uh, that guy right there. This guy the right here. The real guy, not him. The greatest power lifter of all time, Ed Cohn, has graced us with our presence. And we are here today to learn from, from the greatest of all time. So I'm here for you today and, and for all your viewers. We're just going to go over a lot of the finer points of squatting and make sure everyone knows how to do it correctly. Let me take uh, Mike through some squatting here. Sure. So like this? No. Oh. What you want to do is every single set you do, no matter if it's no weight on the bar or five plates on the bar, you want to walk up to it grab the bar, set up underneath it, get tight underneath it, walk it out, the same exact steps. Everything has to be the same every single time. So then there's, there's no variables left. It's always gonna be the same. So that's taken out of it. So you don't have to worry about a bad setup or anything like that. So let, let, let's watch you set up. Well, some of the things he should be kind of focusing on right here, what's some things that should be going through his mind as he's trying to tighten what up. What I like to do, when I, get, when I get under the bar, I like to tighten up every single muscle I have from the back of my neck all the way down to my spine and squeeze everything in, you know, from my, from my back delts to my lats and even, even into the lower lats and squeeze everything into your spine so then you're locked in place. So no matter what, you're not gonna have that rounding and loosening. And squeeze the heck out of the bar. Nice, slow, and controlled setup. Boom. Now what you want to do is the squat isn't just pushing with your legs. You have to use your back at the same time. So as you push up off the floor, you want to drive your back up into the bar as hard as you can and pop your chest up. There you go. Just like that. So and you, it, and you watch as he goes down. Watch as he opens up the groin as he goes down. Don't, don't kind of, everyone used to say push out the knees. But if you notice, when you push out your knees, they'll Last still go one. forward. So usually I try to open up the groin back there. And it enables you to sit back more and end up using more hamstring and glute into the motion. Um, when you're talking about, you know, uh, driving your back into the bar, is it almost like he's trying to almost flick the weight off his back, almost a little bit like a good morning well, type deal? Uh, it, it, as long as when you, you, you don't want to come back this way, because it'll wanna, put too much pressure yeah, on the knees. So you'll push this way with, with your lower body, and you're going to take right where the bar is, chin and chest, and drive it straight up through. That drives the bar up this way and not back. So it's A lot of guys, you'll see them drop right. it back like that. That's, that's from pushing back this way and not driving up. So it's, it's almost like a good morning or like the old... Uh, Paul Anderson back lift where you get underneath something yeah. and you just push up like that. It's right. not that different than a conventional deadlift, really. You're no. still trying to... No, exactly. What uh, kind of determines the stance? Uh, feel. You know, s sometimes if you're, if you're bigger uh, hippie, if you're bigger hippie, you can handle a little bit wider, more opened up. If you got a big fat ass. Yeah, if, 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 you're not, if you're not hippie, usually it's a little bit closer, a little bit more upright. Because you don't have that girth. Right. What about bar placement? Kind of the same? Well, if, if, you're, if you're very close, it has to be high because you can't, you'll end up falling over. So if close two, stance, bar. high bar squat. Yeah. Closer stance, the higher the bar, bar should be. And you, when in your training, you did, did a lot of both, right? You, yeah. You squatted in the meat, yeah. low my, bar. My, my weakness was my quads. I never had really big legs. All my strength was from here to here. So... Regular power squats, I didn't have a problem with, you know, low bar a little bit wider and open it up. Right. So my off-season would be spent doing high bar, closer stand squat to correct a weakness. 
I'll do some squats here and then we'll have you uh, show us. Sure. Yeah, concentrate on opening up the groin. Almost like, to be graphic, it's like open up your taint. <laughs> open up the taint. Open your taint. taint. Every, everybody in every powerlifting meet is going to be screaming that really, out Really, you know, here, Mike, get up in front right here, like you're going to squat, but with no weight. Now, when you go down, first just point your toes out a little bit more for me. Now, when you go down, push your knees out. You feel how that feels? You yeah. feel a lot of strain on your knee. Now, instead of doing that, open up way up high in your groin. So what that does... Show the camera what you <laughs> yeah, pointed what to, What am Sarah. I doing? What you do is when you open up there, when you concentrate on opening up back here, it makes you sit back and yeah, it's open it's like a little kid got to go pee-pee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you open up back there, and it makes... You don't feel any stress on I, your knees. I didn't yeah. sign up for you any You don't of this. feel stress on your knees anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You won't feel open any stress on balls. your knees. Yeah, I would go a little bit... Point your toes out a little bit to even more. Yeah, you, you end up using more hip and hamstring. Right. You got to kind of point yeah, the toes exactly. out. Exactly. You know, people talk about that quite a bit. Like you can get a little bit more torque out of your hip, and you can kind of lock yourself up if your toes are straight. Yeah. Here, here, here's a, a little thing. Or put your feet together like this. All right. Now all I want you to do is keep your feet the same, and just point your toes out like that. What do you feel? Your glutes tighten up. Yeah. So just by pointing your toes out a little bit, you activate more glute, it's which is allow you to drive your a hips. strong ass muscle back there. It's allow you to drive your hips in yes. a little bit more. Yes. Okay. Is that the uh, wider the stance? Maybe the toes no, it doesn't, go up more. It, both? No, it, it doesn't. It, even even if you're even if you're close like you, as long as you're here, you can open up and and, and yeah, use yeah. back here. Try to take advantage. If of not, if, if if not, and you're too straight. You end up here. Yeah, your knees kind of have nowhere to go. Right. It's, it's more of a, just a quad, like an Olympic lifter type squat. Yeah, or a leg press even. Yes. Yeah. Um, does it take you a while to warm up? You got to kind of squat a little differently through the warm-up? Yeah, I'm, 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 most of my warm-ups, I just take it high bar. It takes me a while before my shoulders warm up, or I need, I need enough weight on the bar to have gravity push them down and stretch them out. You're not too concerned if you round over a little bit and then warm up? No, it's just, it's just a warm-up, just, just opening and warming everything up. You know, the... Your warm-up sets are only setting you up for your heavy one, and that's right. the one that matters as long as that's correct. What about uh, depth? You try to hit depth even from the warm-up? Just whatever feels right. As long as the top sets are okay, nothing else really matters. Yeah. I think that's a Metallica song. Yeah. And, and now that I don't compete, as long as I'm close, I don't care. Yeah. Right. Whatever doesn't hurt is fine with me. <laughs> yeah. Them shoes. Amazing. And you notice I, I don't go as, quite as wide as I used to. I used to go about right there. Right. I don't even bother with that anymore. Just too much strain on the hips for now? No, nah, it, it's just, it takes a while to warm up, so I don't even want to worry about yeah. it. Yeah. So th th the same way as what you did, even with high bar, as long as you lock your back up, it won't bow over. And see, and when you go high bar, you're able to keep your elbows down more too. Yeah, help you stay upright. So again, open up, sit back. Now, if I only push with my legs, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. going to happen. Right. So when I hit the bottom, I'll push with my legs and drive my back against the bar. And you can see a big, big difference. Yeah, it kind of right keeps there. that bar path straight. Yeah. You think that's what's happening to a lot of people when they shoot their hips up first? You know, we yeah. see that uh, quite a bit. Either the hips popping up first, it, it, in the it, bottom it's, of the squat. It's, it's one or two things. Either their back is too weak, or else they don't concentrate on using it. Right. And, and, and it's the same principle in the deadlift. The other thing that's common that we see a lot uh, is you know the knees collapsing inward a little bit. Do you have some uh, simple solutions to that, or reps? It's a lot of repetition. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times, repetitions cure it. You know, we we talked about that before. Is uh, we're brought, you're from New York, I'm right, from right. Chicago. So if you're the first one down the street after a <laughs> snowstorm, you're screwed. Right. You want to be that hundredth guy after that pathway set. So you just have to keep doing reps, and it starts correcting right. itself, starts stre strengthening up little weak points, and you get that motor pattern down you better. Teach your body how to do the path exactly down the right path to know what it's way. supposed to do at the right time. Right. What are um, some things you're trying to do? You know, this, we're just, uh, we got some pretty light weight on here, but, <coughs> you know, when someone's in competition and they're going for their max sets and stuff and they're, and they're in a competition where they got to walk the weights out, mm -hmm. what are some things you're trying to do with the walkout? Because he walked out a thousand. Control. So it's, it's, it's like you got to take your time. It's take your time. So it's everything's tight. 
up, let the bar settle. Little step, little step, out, out, you're set. What happens a lot of times is guys go like this, the bar's not settled so it's still moving. They try to set up too fast and all of a sudden they're like this because you get all that reverb going on the bar. So your body hasn't absorbed any of it. So you want to let the body absorb it. So up, let it settle, little step, little step, out and you're set. And there's not a problem. So it's basically at all. like two steps, and then you kind of shuffle your yeah, feet to settle yeah. into it. Yeah, just take your time, little, a couple little steps, and set your feet out. What's your uh, breath look like on that? Do you, you, do you uh, exhale? You know, so on, I'll on take rack? a big one at the beginning, through my nose. Hopefully, it doesn't bleed. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll get it going back. <clears throat> And then take it out. I don't want to let it all out because then, then you're going to see, you see a guy's body. I don't want this to happen when a lot of people do. Right. Because you're actually loosening it up. You're loosening right. up. You so don't want to loosen up that back at all. You want to keep it locked in. So as you walk back, you're letting out a little bit of air and then getting and then more getting air. Just enough to do the, the exercise itself. Um, and you don't want to take it too much of it through the mouth because you're not filling up your lungs. Well, you kind of blow your head off, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that way, if you, if you take it in through your, through your nose, a lot of times you can brace up here and feel, feel that tightness up here in your chest. So you, do you, you do anything special with your belt? Are you trying to push outward against the belt or no, anything? No, like I that? always heard that. I never got anything out of it. I just kept my abs as tight as I could. Right. How tight would you wear your belt? Just In the squat, a lot tighter than the deadlift. Makes sense. Yeah, I remember you used to kind of lean on the rack and yeah. set it up that your, way. Well, your, your belt was the only thing that you were allowed to tighten up to, to change on the, on the platform in the IPF. Right. It couldn't mess with your <coughs> suit or whatever. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in. Wow. Hey. It does feel different. You're uh, actually hitting, the, hitting depth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unbelievable, huh? Well, we it, have, it does feel different. Weight, um, it's a lot harder. Well, it does feel different, kind of going from here, opening up. I've never, uh, yeah, I felt a stretch. I've never heard you talk Just, about that. Or yeah, to pu pushing out the yeah. knees, I always felt a stress on my knees. I didn't like it, didn't. and it didn't allow me to fall back and sit. When right. you get a nice breeze up there, when you're really opening up that taint. Yeah, well, yeah. well he opens it his up, it's like. Yeah, the swamp ass. Um, like I said, I, like I, ocean. you bent over, I could hear the ocean. It was yeah. like a giant conch shell. Oh, my taint is like a conch shell. Yeah. I get it now. I'm gonna squat 900. So. Now keep your, keep your triceps squeezed against your lats. There you go. Chest and chin. <laughs> Nice. Now I know it's you know kind of as simple as sometimes kind of figuring out how it feels for you and stuff. But like when you're coaching someone new, sometimes you see people do some weird stuff with their head. Yeah, too the, high the is bad. Chin will be up I just like to be neutral. Kind of neutral. Yeah, neutral is. is Did safer. you have anywhere that you kept your eyes when you were doing a squat in a meet? Uh, look at the head judge. You're looking at the crowd. At a meet, you you almost think, well, I don't want to look at anyone. I know. When you start going down, you don't really, even though you're looking, you don't see anything. Right. It's like, I'm like looking at that blank screen. I, I, I just don't, I don't see anything. I right. don't notice anything. I just hear myself trying to think and keep it together. But your eyes are probably in the same spot they are yeah. in training. Yeah, it's just here. I don't want this because this, you see how my body changes. Yeah. It falls back. I can't use my back anymore. This will help ro ro roll your shoulders. I like just being neutral. Is there any um, difference to your form? Uh, you know, you did some single ply lifting, you're really strong raw as well, but is there any difference in the form or the similar? For me, it wasn't because I was, uh, I got little Oompa Loompa legs. So here's about all it was. In the old single ply suits, they didn't restrict you as much. Right. So I could get my drop and drop are into it. Are you saying the guys that with say the same cheating technique. more? No, <laughs> not at all. I'm saying that the equipment is better. It's more restrictive today. Right. So instead of being here, you're not going to get down with the same amount of weight. So you used to have to go wider right. to be able to get down, to open up the hips to be able to get down with it. That's how do you, the only uh, How do you coach someone you know, who's got like a wider stance? Is there any differences with a wider stance squat? Like we all have kind of a medium stance yeah. today. Someone uh, wants to go like real wide and they're pretty proficient too at it. Too wide, if, if they're, there's not too many guys that are that wide and proficient. Right. And you end up using more hips and not enough quad. I like to be a little closer to be able to use more muscle. Right. A lot of guys try to bring in the 
the multiplied squat that they've seen on so many videos right. into raw lifting, and it won't work. Right. It won't work at all. You don't have that brace up there in the hips. Well, a lot of guys uh, in your era, they used to go out wide and they'd kind of point the feet almost fo almost straight ahead, almost to try to create like a yeah, uh, squat suit. Yeah, and they lean forward. Right. A lot of those guys got... To kind of lock the hips up, yeah. right? Yeah, but a lot of times what happens with that, as you'll see, is here's toes pointed out. You can see the hips moving. You're going to end up being able to get down. Right. When you have your toes Depth's pointed, gonna be way you're going to hit here. They're going to lock. They're going to bend <laughs> yeah, over. Right. They're going to get red lighted and say, why did I get red lighted? Well, it's because your, your chest actually was below parallel, but your hips weren't. Right. Yeah, but, your, uh, your chest keeps Yeah, that's, down. That, that's the only, it's, it's just a few little t changes. If you video yourself from like this, a side front view, you get the best angle. That's where I coach everyone from. I want to see the best angle where something's going wrong. Right. What about uh, belts and like knee wraps? When would you throw that on in your training or when do you suggest kind of using it? When stuff gets heavy enough. In the off season, a lot of times I wouldn't use them just to get things strengthened right. up yeah. a lot, lot stronger. And uh, then in season, when it got up to a certain point, it, it takes a few weeks to get used to knee wraps again. Yeah. So you want to get that, at first it feels like shit. Right. It feels like, oh no, this is horrible. It feels worse than raw. But then all of a sudden you, your body starts learning how to adapt and hit that hole and, and rebound. I mean, fuck, if I would have had your wraps back then, I would have <laughs> squatted a million freaking pounds. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's, that shows you the advancement, how, how good the rebound, Especially with a really yeah, good pair. Yeah, gotten a lot stiffer. Oh, but but it, it, it's it's the it's the quality of the wrap. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely, the quality of the wrap has is, is, is improved a lot. So uh, you were using an ace bandage type. Well, whatever. It, it, but it, it's still equipped. It got, I got what I wanted out of it. Yeah. Right. So you know to to say oh Eddie Cohen was just raw and he never used it. That's right. bull. Right. <laughs> I still used it to get something out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if it didn't work, he wouldn't have used yeah, it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's no big deal. Yeah. You the you got to be happy with yourself and the way you're lifting. Why did you get into lifting? I wanted to get stronger. So if you're getting stronger, you won already. Right. That's why I all did it. Yeah. I, I mean, all, the, all my trophies and stuff, most of my, I, I donated some to like Special Olympics and all the cool ones. All my sisters got as paperweights and stuff at their house. <laughs> it, it's not the trophy, it's like, when I got inducted into the Hall of Fame from Arnold, the best part of the whole thing with powerlifting was the journey I got Look, look at the friends I got from all over the world. I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be my friend right now. Chris wouldn't be my friend right now. Right. If I didn't have powerlifting, I wouldn't have my, the best woman in the world with me yeah. if, I didn't have, if I didn't go through powerlifting. So what's worth more, a trophy or that? <laughs> a record or that? Yeah. The memories are going to last me. My lists are going to last me. I'm happy with what I did and the way I did it. That's it. Again, I'll still go high bar. Our food's here. That's the sound when I squat out of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, getting down there now. There you go, Ed. Yep. So, you, you know, you lean forward. You lean forward quite a bit. You see someone leaning forward, and a lot of times coaches will coach them out of it. Why are you leaning yeah. forward so much? Um, my lean forward is because my legs are so short and I got a really long torso. So for me to stay like this, you could see I wouldn't use any hip. So I have to lean and sit my butt back like this. As long as my back stays like this and doesn't bow over like this, it's still in a good position. As long as your back is flat, you're okay? Yeah. And that kind of goes back to everything you've been saying is you got to find what works for you. Yeah. You'll... When I coach people, I coach them how I coach myself. And then as time goes on, the little different nuances that they have, body type, what they can handle as far as workload, and you know, volume, and, yeah. and all that stuff. Then that plays, then it's just little offshoots. The same program, but different. It starts to change. And that's, I think, what everyone should do. Keep it simple, and then little things. All the assistance work in the world doesn't mean crap unless it helps your Main lifts and yeah. it has a carryover. Yeah. Squeeze it tight. Good. Point open. Drive it all the way through at the back. There you go. Same way. Drive. Push your legs and drive your back at the same time. Make it all work at once. There you go, Mike. Oh, there you go. 
think he should be pointed out any further, or you think that his his be- toes could be opened up a little bit, but he's not quite comfortable with it. Yeah. So you can't just take someone yeah, and all yeah. of a sudden, yeah. yeah. Maybe slowly it'll, it'll, over it'll, time. Yeah. Just and and, and and sometimes all it takes is that much. Yeah, yeah. For a couple of weeks, then that much. So you do that two or three times, and all of a sudden you're open. And your body's used to it. It's not a good idea to change something too drastic, especially It'll, heavy it, weights. That, that, that's when people say, oh, I can't do that. It feels like crap. Right. It's like when they didn't if, give if, if someone says, oh, I tried sumo, but it, it didn't work. I couldn't do anything. Well, that's because when you first tried it, you tried to do as much as you right. could conventional, and it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. You have to set down that pathway I hear people first. say it all the time. They keep saying, they, oh, I tried a thousand things. I tried this. Yeah. I tried that. And they didn't really give it enough of a chance. I, and they keep know, doing the three things yeah. that never worked for them in the I first haven't place. done sumo <laughs> since, like, the mid '90s, and I could set up sumo perfect right now because I did so many reps for so long yeah. that my body knows exactly how to do it. When we talk about like uh, 10,000 hours being an expert or whatever. Maybe it's 5,000 reps, and then yeah, it's a lot. It's a hours. lot of reps. Yeah. Any you know, uh, when I when I hurt when my hip was messed up, I didn't squat for for two and a half years. The first time I took a squat out of uh, out of the rack, I walked up to it the same way without even realizing it, took it off, and everything felt like I was home. Yeah. It was just perfect again. Nothing felt bad at all. Any preference on where the belt is worn or anything? Or is that just Whatever individual? Whatever feels the best. You know, like some guys wear it up higher. Yeah, some Stan kind of has it underneath his nipples. Yeah, well, he, he, see, he's not hippie. Right. So he doesn't really if, have your hips aren't, if, if your hips aren't strong enough a lot of times, what, what happens is you'll have a tendency to lean more. Right. So he'll wear it up higher to keep this braced here. Do you, uh, which do you look know? at the look at the effect. If I have it here, and if I put it up higher, the effect on my back changes. Right. Do you know anything about the belt boner? I'm a big fan of kind of like rather than tucking my belt in this way, I kind of like it to be like a yeah, little bit erect. Boner. It's it's just to make you feel more like a man. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, I could leave it out like this, but then that'll probably embarrass you and everybody else here. Well, then you'd be you. We call you Kevin Oak. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Excellent takeoff. <sighs> Chest. There you go. Drive right against the bar, Mike. Use your mark. Use your back. Good. Uh, so, what are like uh, you know five things to remember here on the squat in closing? First of all, uh, your your setup has to be perfect. Practice your setup from walking out to the bar. You know, look, look. I, I with even no weight, I can walk up to the bar the exact same way. He's a mime. Pantomiming. <laughs> and you see how I wiggle in and get everything tight. You can watch from the back. Is when I grab the bar and I put it in the position. The bar would be what, like here? Yeah. Right is, on the rear is I will go like this and squeeze the bar into my body so you can see it locked in. And then your takeoff, everything is the same. Let it settle. Little step. Little step. Out. If you make the mistake and take two biggest steps, Look at all the weight and what happens. Look at the shift on the body, and all of a sudden the weight is like this. Then the weight is. Then, then you're wondering why you're like this before you right. start. You're not set up. How you start is how you're going to finish. So once you get that down, you don't have to worry about it. All, all of a sudden, that weight feels so light because you set up perfect. So you don't right. feel. It doesn't feel like a thousand pounds anymore. It feels like 800. Oh, that's all. Now going down and coming up is the other story. So it's just bracing, bracing this as tight as you can, squeezing the shit out of your abs. I never, if, if, if you push your abs out into the, in, into the belt, you'll feel your lower back get pushed forward. Yeah. That's dangerous. That's all the weight is on your lower back then. I never arch my lower back. I always arch my middle to upper You're back. you arching, okay, yeah, through yeah. here. Yeah, right there. So then when you, when, you, when you start down, sit back a little bit, open up your taint. Boom. Drive with your drive, not just with your legs, but you gotta drive your back. Your legs are automatically gonna push, right? Just for survival, right? Yeah. Just for survival. So when you hit that bottom and you go to push this way, if you don't use your chest and chin up, that makes you drive against the bar, boom. And that allows your hips to go forward. Right. If this doesn't push down, if this doesn't pu- push up, at the same time, the hips won't push forward. It's the exact same way that you deadlift. Ex- exact same way, it has to be. It has to be, boom, it has to go forward. So number one is do the same setup every single time. Yeah. Like learn and develop a setup, yeah. try to do the same thing every time. Yeah. Once you go to walk out, once you got your steps down, get yourself really tight. Yep. The next step is to 
uh, push back, open yeah. up the taint. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not like you're pushing yourself back like this. When you push back a little bit, that's when you start to bend and open up at the same time. It's almost like someone's face is right here and you're trying to drop your balls onto them. Pretty much. Yeah, with well, the cue right there, you said, so you know. So silent mic is underneath me. <laughs> yeah, silent, but just get down there, Mike. And being that I'm, I'm, I'm older and a lot of years of abuse in my system, I have to go extra low. <laughs> so you look, look if, if I just push back, this, yeah. now I'm screwed. Well, you hear that cue all the so, time, right? Yeah, push back, back, push back. back, back. Push back. Yeah. So no, what, what it really means is, is when you bend your knees a little bit and push your butt back, not, not, now you have to open up right away. And when you open up right away, that enables you to sit back automatically. It, 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 because you opened up back right. here, it makes you stay back there. Mm. If I open up up here, it makes me stay here. Yeah. Your so the bar is kind of staying over your hips the whole yeah. time. Yeah. So after you get tight, your first thing that you do on your descent is to open up a little bit. Yeah. Opening up and pushing back. Yes. Pretty much, pretty much simultaneously yeah. almost. Yeah. And once you get back into that one spot, once you get back into the one spot here, yeah. you don't have to push back anymore. It just drops straight down. Right. I think that's a you know a hot topic in the world is oh do you break at your knees do you break yeah, at you, your you hip? Don't, after you get back yeah. you don't have to push back anymore. It's just going to drop yeah. straight and then but then you stay in that position like this. Right. And the last thing kind of out of the hole is to kind of push with your back. Yeah. Drive your back up through the bar. What is uh, what are two assistance exercises that are really effective? To help improve their squat, I know it's dependent on where the weaknesses yeah. are, but um, I like the two a, favorites a, a of yours. high bar closer stance squat, and I like pause squats. When you pause in the hole, you, you you teach yourself how to be tight, and the only way to get up properly is to use everything the way you're supposed to. Is to push with your glutes and your right. hamstrings and your back at the same time. Because when you stop in the hole here, and you say up, all yeah. right, now you're screwed. So you got to learn how to stay tight. And you say up, and you'll push here, and you'll drive up here, but you'll start recognizing it more. So all you're doing, is it's a learning tool to teach your body how to stay tight and what to do from the bottom. And then the high bar, like you mentioned earlier, is just yeah. kind of build up your quads, which yeah. is kind of the go. Yeah. With some of those types of movements, what are the set and rep ranges typically? Like, what did you do for yourself? Uh, mostly anywhere from fives down to doubles. Okay. For and those. That, is that with the assistants also? Push those kind of heavy? Uh, my assistants work, well, those are my assistants. Yeah. Um, squats, sometimes I'd run even 10s and 8s, but that was just, you know, to get, if, if you want to build a faster race car, build a bigger engine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you build a bigger engine. And, and hence, all of a sudden, your body fat starts going down because you got more muscle anyways. Yeah. That's what I did my whole career. I didn't, we didn't know about diet and stuff and what the bodybuilders did back then because powerlifters were separate. The bodybuilders were the crazy ones with their diets and everything. We didn't realize what they were doing was right. pretty damn good, and we should have, you know, learned a little bit from them. What's the main thing to do after? <laughs> Charge. What's the main thing to do after a meet? So you just you just uh, got yourself all set up for a contest. Yeah. You went into the meet, and let's just say you did okay or you did well. Uh, now you know. Sometimes you kind of have like the post meet blues, like you almost don't know what to do with yourself mm -hmm. the next couple of weeks. What's important to get you ready for the next competition? I'd go in the gym on Wednesday and do some light squats and benches and deadlifts. Just for your mind. Yeah. And it would, it would actually he heal me like that. My body would feel fantastic. A couple of days of stretching, I'd start back the next week, ready to go, feel re rejuvenated again. How do you handle more weight each competition the way that you did? Did you kind of have to go back and start over each time? or? Yeah, I started a new cycle based on the numbers of the last cycle and said, hmm, okay, I wrote notes the, the whole last cycle and saw where I ended up. Okay, this is what I have to change based on my notes. My weak points were this. Okay, I got to change this. Okay, uh, my numbers felt like this. Well, I might have to change my numbers a little bit. And you just, you, you, wrote, you already wrote down your script for the next meet right. by what you did. That's a, you know, people don't, it's hard to be honest with yourself and point out your yeah. weaknesses. It's easy to say, okay, well, I'm great at rack deadlifts from below the knee. So that's the only thing I'm going to post up on <laughs> Facebook is me doing, you know, 950. But it gets know, a lot of likes. You've been watching his Instagram. But it gets a lot of likes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that means a lot in a contest. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? It, 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 if you actually are honest with yourself and work on your weaknesses, all of a sudden that weakness isn't as weak. It's coming at a later and later spot. Now, your weaknesses are always going to be at your, your, your weaknesses no matter what because that's just how our bodies are built. But they're gonna get, your weaknesses are going to come later and later with, with more weight. The last thing, i give these guys a little message on why they should be powerlifting and why they should go do a powerlifting meet. The reason I would do it is everyone needs a goal. And to just go in the gym and work out doesn't mean crap. There's a difference between training and having a goal. 
and you'll be really proud of yourself and realize what you've got in the, in, in the tank. Everyone wants to get stronger. Everyone wants to do something and feel better. Uh, guys and girls, you're going to notice a change in your body, and you're going to have uh, uh, better confidence. Who, who doesn't want, as far as like girls, their legs to be firmer and, and their butts to be rounder and tighter and, and, to, and, and to feel like they have less body fats and empowered? And, and guys, with, with you know, our fragile male egos, the way it goes, who, who doesn't want to look better and feel stronger? Everyone wants to feel better and look better and feel stronger. All right, Ed, that was awesome, man. That's, uh, nice that's pretty much it from me, Silent Mike, and Ed Cohn. That's how to squat from supertraining.tv. Take care, guys. <laughs>